Hi, welcome to Ask a Developer. I'm Brian Parle. Today's question comes from Alex, and he'd like to know how do you create your Android applications architecture? That's a great question and one that's very hard to answer in a short amount of time, so I'll try and distill the question down to a few key points. When I'm coding, I tend to follow the solid principle so there's a clear separation of concern in all the classes I create. What this allows me to do is to separate out my business logic from the Android-specific classes such as activities or fragments so that I can write plain JUnit tests instead of using Android instrument tests. This allows me to run my tests really quickly and allows uh, a, a very high test coverage. If you're doing something where you need to test something with the Android context, like a very complex custom view, you can use something like RoboElectric to help you unit test this as well. For critical functionality, I like to go ahead and write functional tests using something like Robotium to go ahead and run on an emulator or a device. And all of these things should tie into a CI system such as Bamboo, Travis, or Jenkins. When you're creating your application, stick to your current business needs. Don't try and predict the future. If you're working with the Agile team and you try to do that, somebody's probably going to yell Yagni at you, which is you ain't going to need it. If you don't need it right now, don't worry about it right now and focus on what you need to put in your application. To give an example of selecting components for an application, let's assume that we have to create an application that goes ahead and talks to a web service to retrieve a list of URLs that point to images that we need to then download and display to the user. So for this application, the first component we like to focus on is HTTP communication. So what we'll need is a way to make HTTP requests and a way to do that off the main thread so we don't block any of the UI. So if you're a fan of open source, which we are here, I highly recommend using one of the following three libraries, Retrofit, Ion, or Volley. These are all well-maintained and good open source solutions. If you don't want to or can't use open source, you'll need to roll your own using Apache's HTTP client or HTTP URL connection. Of the two, Apache HTTP client is no longer officially supported by Google, so I'd recommend going with HTTP URL connection. And finally, if the server supports response caching, you should support it as well. The second component we'd like to look at is image loading. This can be very tricky to pull off correctly, and it can leave you with a lot of out of memory exceptions or other performance issues. I would highly suggest to go ahead and look at the open source libraries out there, such as Picasso, Universal Image Loader, or Volley. If you do have to roll your own, go ahead and reference these. They can really help you out. This is hard to do correctly, and it's a source of very many bugs. The final component is actually communication between all the components. Originally, we used Android's handler of class to do a lot of this work, but it wasn't the right solution for all of our problems. So what we've moved over to using is an open source solution by Square called Auto, which gives you a message bus you can use on Android. So at a high level, those are the components I would look at for the application we mentioned earlier. But some of the other considerations you may have to take into account are things like navigation. Most people use the standard Android navigation of activities and fragments, but you should check out Square. They're doing some really cool stuff with mortar and flow. Another could be persistence to disk. This could be as simple as using shared preferences for simple data, SQLite, maybe with an object relational mapper on top of it, like ORM Lite for more complex data, or maybe you could just cache your JSON in the file directory. That's all the time we have for today. As I said earlier, this is an extremely broad topic that we could talk a lot about. So if you have any more questions in this vein, tweet us at hashtag askadev or leave a comment.